Okay, uh, we are recording now. So welcome to the class for anyone else who will um, listen, join uh, asynchronously and listen to this recording later on. Uh, uh, welcome, this is uh, intro to uh, discrete math for computer science students. And um, I think I would uh, first uh, just share this uh, website uh with you um i hope that right now we are sharing the screen and you have um the you can see the website of the class uh, okay so let me just uh, quickly go over the stuff uh, you know using the website as a guideline so wh what's going on um uh, lectures uh, Tuesday, Thursday, 3.30 to uh, 5. There's two discussion sessions. Uh, they're right now scheduled at 6 and 7 p.m. Uh, let's come back to that, okay? Because I, I don't think these are the most happy times. And um, we have, and the GAs uh, have some suggestions for how to, how to arrange this, uh, especially at the time when uh, everything is remote. Um, so I'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, so uh, let, let me first, uh, here is bolded must read. Okay. So we will come back to this very shortly. Uh, but let's look at other materials here. So uh, first of all, uh, we have an electronic textbook. It's a Zybooks. So if you follow that link, you get to uh, a Zybook page. Um, where, uh, because I'm registered for this textbook, so once you register and pay $58 uh, for a subscription, you will get, uh, I think, the same view. Um, so uh, the book is shared between ICS 6D and 6B, which are two different quarters, uh, two different topic, uh, subjects, which go over this material, they go, they take a different path. So. Basically, the other class uh, looks into stuff that, uh, you know, we do some chapters, they do some chapters, and the whole book is covered. Uh, uh, the chapters we don't cover in this class are marked as optional. Uh, you're welcome to read them, but they will not be part of this, uh, of this class. And um, here is what is part of this class. So we'll start with logic, which by the way, we share with ICSB. So if you took ICSB, you went over this stuff. But, you know, don't less on your laurels. Uh, we will go over this. Uh, will not take long time here. Um, and it might be a good idea for you to review this stuff, even if you have heard of this before. Uh, we'll move to sets and functions. And, and then jump um to uh induction and recursion uh here we'll start talking about very computer sciencey stuff um basically in induction and recursion recursion is a process where that any kind of process like in programming where a solution to uh you know sorting a big list is divided into recursively into sorting a smaller list and then somehow combining the result. And we'll see multiple examples of this. This is one of the fundamental concepts in, you know, that, that allows uh, computing to be efficient. And, and we'll, you know, we'll spend a significant time on this. It's not particularly easy, you know, it doesn't come so naturally. Like it's, it's kind of, uh, well, it's uh, the hard part of this is that uh, it's sort of easy, but you can get it wrong easily also. Okay, so well, the best thing is to practice and to see many guys, uh, in, you know, many cases of it, or at least uh, that's my belief uh, that that's what will get you acquainted and and well versed into seeing examples of recursion, being able to uh, basically think recursively, and reason about recursive processes, which is induction. Uh, at, 
somewhere in the middle of this, there will be the first test, okay, which will be cover everything we have seen, uh, we've done uh, so far. Uh, then this material is so important that we will actually spend the next segment on the second part of this uh, of this of the chapter. Uh, you know, roughly here is this midpoint. And uh, then we'll have a second test, which essentially covers just this stuff, uh, the recursion and induction stuff. Uh, and then we go to a complete jump, okay? Uh, we go from recursion and induction to modular arithmetics, okay? So this is just chapter nine, and we learn about uh, how to Basically, we learn about modular arithmetic. So, who cares about modular arithmetic? Okay, so this is um, it's used in all over computation, uh, but it's also used for cryptography. Okay, so uh, the sort of everything you learn here will be captured uh, in, with an example of a crypto system. So you will learn about what the prime number is, what are composites, how to distinguish them, are there efficient algorithms that generate primes, the test whether a number is prime, um, are there efficient uh, algorithms to factorize, uh, are there efficient algorithms to multiply and divide uh, modulo some integer, uh, because uh, modular arithmetics is so is the domain of crypto systems. Uh, effectively, you see, if a crypto system cannot quite work on arbitrary integers because they will grow and grow and grow, it has to cut them, and that's called modular reduction. And um, in order to understand how these systems go, you you have to understand modular arithmetics. Uh, why are we doing this? It's not only used in cryptography; it's used elsewhere, but there is a more and more a belief that cryptography is all over the place, that sooner or later, as a computer science person, you're going to interact with some crypto systems. Uh, and, and so you need to know how, you know, what's what's the bread and butter of these of these crypto systems. So that's a, a third segment of the class, and which will be finished by a test number three. Uh, the last uh, topic is again a shift. Okay, uh, it's counting. It's uh, not uh, like uh, induction and recursion in in chapter in in the second segment. It's not like modular arithmetics. These are very different topics, really. Uh, but it's another essential thing which we want to cover, uh, and it's discrete math. And it's incredibly useful uh, for in the life of a computer scientist slash engineer, uh, because uh, what is counting? It's combinatorics. It can help you understand how to answer questions like how many bit strings there are with certain properties. Okay, where like the first part of the bit string is a is a is is the flip of the second part. Okay. Or how many passwords are there that have three digits and five uh, letters in any order where the digits can repeat, but letters cannot? Okay? And on and on and on. Everywhere in computer engineering, you will have these type of issues. Like you have to understand, like if you have 10 computers on a network and three can fail, how many failure modes are there and what's the probability that they will happen? Okay, uh, so the, at the end, we will sort of finalize this again with a test. That will be the last test in the class. That will be the last day of the, uh, of the quarter. And um, we'll pick out outside of mere counting into probability, because indeed that's the most useful immediate instantiation of why learning all this stuff is useful. Uh, but because this will be in the last week, so this will technically not be part of the of the test. Okay, I mean, not just technically, it will not be part of the test. On the other hand, this is, you know, like a kind of, you know, putting a crown on what you are learning. 
even though these are four segments of the class, which are, uh, I confess right away, different and not so closely related to one another. However, the first part, logic, sets and functions, gives you the uh, language to express things uh, with. We will use that language all over the place. Okay, the language is, uh, okay, when you discuss counting, you have to set, here's a domain, it's a set of elements from which I can uh, take passwords, like in this password example with three digits and seven letters, right? Uh, it's a set, okay? So it's here. Uh, I will use some logic by saying that the passwords are either of this type, three letters, or of that type, five digits, right? I will use expressions like for all passwords in you know, some set, there exist whatever, whatever. This is logical expressions. Uh, it's not like you learn this stuff and then you can forget it. This is a language that will recur all over the place later on, okay? Induction and recursion, we'll focus on them here, but you will see uh, that, for example, in modular arithmetics, almost all really cool algorithms are recursive. So uh, you have immediate examples of why the recursion uh, was so important to learn, okay? Because indeed this stuff here is uh, using recursion. recursion. Okay, uh, just particular instance of it, but uh, you will be like, oh, I'm so lucky that I just learned about this in a previous segment of this class. Um, and uh, in counting, it, uh, I will definitely emphasize moments when uh, there is an element of a recursive thinking, although um, that will not be so, uh, it, it will not be all over the place like it, was, it will be in modular arithmetic. Okay, so that's the overview of what we're going to do in this class, topic-wise, right? Um, well, let's come back to the website. Uh, syllabus, next. Okay, so here is the syllabus. Syllabus. Um, uh, first week, logic, then sets and functions, then uh, beginning of in uh, induction and strong, and str and strong induction. Uh, and then, uh, because the first test will come uh, on this day, April 22nd. Uh, but the test will always be on Thursdays. So the Tuesday lecture will start a new topic, okay? Although in this case, it's really a continuation of that. The test will not cover this stuff because I don't want you to like, you know, on Tuesday you learn stuff and on Thursday you're tested on it, right? You will be tested on stuff that was in the previous week, okay? Uh, so they kind of, they don't go, you know, uh, they, of course, tests are after the segment that you, uh, of when you learn a given material, uh, but but there is like a little lecture before uh, the, the test that is not on it. So this next segment, because it's algorithms and basically more about recursion, will be tested on the Thursday in week six, but this test will be from, you know, week four and week five material, right? Then we start the modular arithmetics, that will be week six and seven, and the test on that is in week eight on Thursday, okay? And the final uh, thing is, um, is going to be counting, and, and that is on the last day of the class. Okay, uh, the, each of these, uh, here are, are the links to the sections. Uh, now they might be adjusted, you know, if I go slower or faster, uh, perhaps we'll adjust these slightly, right? But this, the shifts are not going to be big. You know, perhaps we manage to cover one more section uh, or perhaps we only cover one less section, right? So these this, this shifts are going to be small. Um, and uh, you have the links to the uh, slides that I used in the previous quarter 
Uh, yes, I don't think these slides will change dramatically, but I will adjust them. You know, perhaps I will give new examples uh, here and there, uh, etc. Um, so, so that's the syllabus. Um, uh, there is this piazza. It's a class discussion. Okay, it's a class discussion site. Um, uh, we you. Um, well, anyway, I, okay, I can click on this, but uh, you know, it's not so. Um, it, it looks like this. Like, for example, somebody asked a question. You know, wh where will I put recordings? I'll put them on YouTube. They're not linked yet because uh, there's no recordings yet. Um, okay, um, you can post a question. When you post a question, you should tag it with some tags. And uh, answer what I always want you to do. It's like if you say you have questions about some homework problem, look first if there are no existing questions already and don't post a new one. Post it as a follow up on the previous one. This would make it more manageable for everybody, right? Like if it's, uh, we don't want, there is a way to link uh, in your, you, you write something like hash. 239 to make a link to the question number. So let's say this is the uh, question number five. I do this, uh, C enter to like this. If you start, this will have a link to the other question, okay, to the other uh, topic. Oh, somebody says that the link is like this. Maybe it is. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's try it. Uh, post my note. Okay. I can't. Hola. Office hours. Let's try again. Um, uh, yes, that created a link. Boom. And it, it linked to this other one. OK, so it's underscore. Thank you for uh, uh, correction. Um, OK, so this is Piazza. Please be gentle. You know, don't scream at me. Don't scream at anybody else. Uh, this doesn't happen. Uh, very often that people do, but it occasionally happens that uh, people get into some uh, fiery uh, stuff. So try to moderate yourself. Um, uh, the test will be on great scope, so I will get to that in a in a second. Okay, so um, okay, maybe I will just remove the stupid uh, post uh, actions. Uh, delete. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, uh, Piata, okay, kill that. Okay, so we're back. All right. Uh, I, I hope that throughout the stuff, my screen is still showing. Maybe I'll make sure. Okay. Um, so that was Piazza. Aha. Sign up for this because um, you know we have many ways to communicate, uh, uh, but. Uh, it's best if there's only one avenue, right? So we logs everything, everything is there, it's a single place. And for me, it's going to be Piazza. So sign yourself up. If I make a post with an option that it generates an immediate email to everybody, then you will be getting that email. So if you don't sign yourself up, you will not get the email. Uh, of course, you can go and periodically check the Piazza site for updates and so forth, but this way you might miss some sort of ASAP kind of stuff like, hey, I made a mistake. Uh, this homework problem is not really good. You don't have to solve it or something like that. Okay. So anyway, here is the Piazza stuff. Uh, you uh, sign up uh, here uh, following these links. Okay. Uh, lectures, of course, you know, because otherwise you wouldn't be listening. Um, and I'll put it on a, a, a YouTube. Uh, I don't know if that's the best choice, but somehow worked before. I'm trying to read what somebody, uh, if we took 6B, do we still have to finish all the activities? Yes, you do. You have to finish all the activities. All right. Um, so uh, discussions, hold on, uh, remove something that blocks my view. All right. Discussion sections. So right now they are set for six and seven. 
Okay, maybe this is just a good time to talk about this is any. I somehow feel that the 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. is not the happiest uh, time. And um, one TA suggested the following formula that uh, he actually, we have two TAs, uh, Will and Annie. Uh, you know, if they're here, uh, uh, hi. Uh, I have worked with both of them. Uh, they are great. Uh, I'm sure you will like them. Uh, um, so uh, Will suggested that we that he instead of um, that he changes the formula, kind of reverses it like this. He pre-records uh, discussion, okay, which basically means that he goes over some examples and he gives you some questions, okay. Perhaps he goes over some of them and then he gives you some extra. And this is pre-recorded and not interactive. You can listen to any time you want. And then during some fixed time, like for example, these, but perhaps these are really not the best ones. Instead of this, he will just have discussions in a, with whoever wants to talk about how those solutions work, you know, uh, how to solve similar problems, etc. Okay. And that part will not be recorded. Because, uh, well, Will says, and I uh, think that it's probably right, is that recording is not exactly stimulating to, you know, interaction. That uh, uh, people are not that happy to start speaking and sort of think freely if they're being recorded, and which makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I hate being recorded. I'm joking. So, um, so that's a formula. Uh, I think it makes sense uh, because you know what we want to get is uh, is for this to be both interactive, but at the same time recorded so that people who for whom these times are not convenient, including people on Asian time zones who are joining remotely, okay. Uh, can produce it. And, you know, in practice, this often happens. Uh, many people at first, like, like, just sort of, oh, I'm too busy, I'm not going to attend the discussion. And then a test comes, and they're like, I actually don't understand this stuff. I wish I had participated in the discussion. Uh, I haven't. Okay, maybe at least I can listen to these videos and try to understand something now from them. Ah. So then, so these are incompatible uh, things, uh, but maybe with that formula that you pre-record some, a bunch of examples and then have an interactive session, maybe that's a winning formula. So I will put it up as a, you know, uh, as, a, as a thing for a, maybe a student poll, um, you know, which formula is best. And also these times, I some of think that these are not the best, okay? So uh, maybe we'll put up a poll and say, you know, what time do you, do you really want to meet? And, and the, the TAs will give like two or three slots and the students will just say, you know, which ones they, 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 most, they most like and we'll do them then. Uh, okay, uh, I guess, uh, uh, the discussion sections will definitely teach new stuff. So no, 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 no. Discussion sessions teach new stuff. Like, I mean, okay, what's new stuff? Okay, so it's like another example, how to solve this type of problem. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to go over all examples in a lecture. Uh, a lecture takes some cut. Um, pick some things that I think is the most important, but of course there's other examples and maybe very quite different, okay? And uh, just listening to lecture, you will not quite know how to solve them, okay? Um, theoretically, you can completely ignore us, okay? You cannot listen to lectures, you cannot listen to discussion, just, uh, just read the book, okay? And, you know, if that's your mode, 
uh, maybe that fits you, okay? I definitely want you to read the book, but, uh, and maybe for some of you, it will be enough. Uh, but um, yeah, but I doubt somehow this is the majority. Um, okay, and I hope that there's something that transpires during the lectures and discussions that you will uh, appreciate on top of what you're of everything you can read in the book. All right. Um, so discussions, office hours. Okay, so the discussions and office hours, maybe they are one and the same thing uh, in the end. And uh, then uh, list to Gradescope. Okay, so Gradescope, you're all already on it because I just uploaded the Canvas side. Uh, I put up uh, homework one, it has a stupid deadline for now, okay? But I just put it so that you can see. Okay, you click on homework one. Uh, students, of course, have not submitted anything. This is my interface, so it might slightly different from yours. Here is the last quarter uh, homework one, which I will probably reuse in its entirety. Uh, you, uh, when you, you, as a student, you will uh, submit uh, the the uh, your solutions, um, and you will submit them. Uh, perhaps this is not exactly the same interface that you have. You know, you you perhaps it doesn't give you an option to submit as as, as and as a different student, uh, but uh, it will probably give you only an option to submit as yourself. Uh, select a PDF, and this is an important thing. This has to be a PDF file, right? Uh, I don't want you to submit the JPEGs. Uh, unfortunately, Gradescope will allow you to do this, but this is an awful interface, which like for the grader looks very, looks looks bad. Uh, so um, I, I refuse to take a PDF, uh, anything but a PDF here, okay? And when you submit, uh, you will, it can be typeset. If you like typesetting, this is great. Uh, but it can also be you just solve it on a piece of paper and then you film, you know, you take a picture uh, with some app that is able to scan a bunch of pages, combine them into a PDF. And then you upload to the site. And when you do, it will process it and it will ask you, identify where in these five pages of your homework is the solution to problem one. And where is the solution to problem two, et cetera. So you just have to mark what page every problem is and then click up. Okay. Uh, that's the interface. And when we grade, uh, you know, we are going to, you're going to see the, the scores and all the comments, uh, you know, through this Gradescope interface. Uh, there is uh, here a, a, a tab that tells you how to, but, but you're all logged on. So this is really important only for people who join the class late. Um, okay. And, uh, and Will, by the way, is uh, putting up some guides. Uh, Will, maybe put it on the, on, the, on the Piazza stuff that you also put here. Um, yeah, sounds good. So that it can be perused uh, later uh, uh, by everyone. But thank you for posting. Okay, uh, here is the part that I um, uh, said that we have to get into, but um, I skipped. Grading policy and testing. Okay, so uh, let's go over this. Um, uh, grading is quite so simple. Uh, it's the four tests, okay? There is these four tests in the class, they constitute almost 90% of your uh, score. Uh, then there is a 10% is a reading. What is reading? You, uh, in this uh, uh, electronic textbook, there are certain activities called participation activities and challenge activities. They're very clearly marked. Um, you have to do them. And when you do them, the ZI book website basically marks you as somebody who has read, okay? If you read without doing the exercises, you get a zero score for reading. If you just do the exercises and you ignore all the rest, you get a 100% score for reading, okay? 
we will not monitor whether you read when it makes sense to read. Of course, it makes sense to read as we are going over the material. Uh, however, I'm not going to monitor this. And I will simply upload your reading score at the very end of the class uh, on this date, which is a date after the final exam week. The point is, I want you to read, I want you to practice, I want you to do those activities as we cover the material. But if something happens and you, you, know, you don't do something, you please catch up and read it after, okay? And that's all I'm going to monitor. It's not worth uh, just so much. And I just don't want to babysit you, okay? And make sure that you read at the proper time. It's up to you. Uh, then there is two freebies, okay? One is homework one and two. Uh, why? Because uh, homework is essentially optional and I will talk about this later. But I noticed that when I do, did this last quarter, I thought uh, some people had no idea how to operate the Gradescope interface where you have to use during the test. So I want you to familiarize, make sure that everybody knows the interface, okay? So that's why I'm doing this. Uh, after that, I don't care. And uh, so I uh, give you one point for course evaluation. It's a new thing. I haven't never done this before, but other faculty basically convinced me that this is a good way to do. You can read why. Now, uh, we had a formula like this last uh, fall, and I thought it well, worked well. Uh, in the opinion poll, students almost all said that this is a great formula. OK, it's an optional final. So by default, you don't have to take a final. You're scored using this formula. But if you believe that something went wrong on those tests, on one of the tests, you underperformed. And there's tons of reasons you know, why somebody can underperform, obvious reasons, right? If you, uh, if you uh, believe that that has happened and you basically are better now, Okay, you have covered this material, you have gone over this, and now you are in a better shape. Then uh, you can opt to take the final. You do so by explicitly registering with us uh, by at 24 hours before the final. Okay, if you don't register, you are not part. If you register, you have to, you commit yourself to being the part, which means that if you do badly on the final, you're still scored according to this alternative formula, okay? So it's not the max of the two. It's your choice, but once you make the decision, you know, then if you do horribly on the final, well, too bad. Uh, now that said, that hasn't happened in the fall. So everybody who wanted to take the final, uh, because they all thought that, you know, they didn't do that great on some test, they want to show that they can do better, they in fact did better, okay? Except of some people who cheated were caught and failed the class. All right, so um, that's it, okay? And uh, if you choose this formula, you everything else is graded, you know, uh, proportionally less, right? Uh, now, there is some technicalities. When you decide to take a final, you would like to know all your scores. Unfortunately, the last test is just before the final exam. However, that test, so we don't want to commit ourselves to finalizing grading for it. But we will release solutions and you will be able to self-grade. Self so if we don't manage to grade so quickly, you will be able to approximate the scores that you, the scores that you get. Okay, and based on that, just decide. All right, um, and um, but also, you know, I very often got this uh, type of questions. Like, I think I, I have 88%, is that gonna be B or A? I will not answer this, okay? I, I don't want to deal with this. There is many reasons why I cannot tell you uh, before I get everything in, and only then I can decide what exactly constitutes an A, what constitutes B. And 
I don't believe anybody else does this any other way at, a, at, at any university, okay? Uh, so I don't think I'm an exception here. And even though you might really, really want to know, I will not be able to tell you, okay? Um, what else about this? Okay, so, so this is what we basically score in the class, okay? Now, the class does have other components. I very much like you to listen to lectures. I think they are fascinating, okay? I mean, okay. <laughs> okay, that's maybe too much to say, but then, I mean, once in a while, I think that we're getting to some like really cool stuff, okay? And, and uh, perhaps not so unusual either. Uh, discussion section also, These, the TAs are very good. Okay, uh, they get great reviews. Uh, people who attend the stuff uh, they learn, uh, attend it, use this resource. Uh, the class has different fragments. You can sort of slack off because you think that you know all about logic and then it suddenly bites you that you actually don't know some stuff. Um, and then you'll be like, I don't have enough resources to learn. Well, you have many, okay? Uh, make use of them. Um, another resource is, I believe it's a brilliant one. Unfortunately, you know, some students, quite many students take use of it. There's some who don't. Um, it's, it's, you know, I guess it's okay. You just sort of coast through the class or you're like really good at the stuff and like you don't need this. Um, I think everybody should use this. Um, uh, what is this? And at the end of every section in this electronic textbook, there are additional exercises. Uh, these additional exercises have an option that I can open a solution for them. So I will actually do so for about half of the problems. And what I want you to do is to test yourself. So after you read, if you think you understand, okay, do some exercise, see if you can do them and then open the solution and compare. This will give you an immediate feedback. Do you understand or you don't? Then go to a harder exercise and recurse and do the same, right? Until you see it at all, you know, you're master of the stuff, right? You can answer all these questions. If you don't, I kind of don't have an, you know, like this is a brilliant uh, exercise material that can you can see. Are you following? Are you not following? Is there something you should you should look into and and understand better? Homework have the same role. Homework are going to be entirely made of different problems. Exactly so, I can open all these additional exercises, and you can t see you can practice using them. And then you have a separate practice with the homework exercises. Um, uh, so that you have as much practice as, as you can, okay? That's the point. Uh, and so homework has two purposes in a way. I mean, you know, there's like a kind of basic material that I want you to be able to do, okay? This basic material will be tested. Of course, homework, exercises this basic material and, uh, you know, drum, you know, make sure that you understand it. But homework might also have some sort of questions that try to expand on the stuff, make some link with something so that you're like, oh, I can use this now to solve a different type of problems, okay? Uh, they, they might not be on the test, okay? Uh, but I still think this is really cool a moment where you actually learn, you know, to operate using this material that you just learned, use it for something new, try to use it for something new, okay? You might not, it might not be on a test, but um, I believe you will be learning good stuff this way. All right, the third, the last uh, uh, resource is office hours. Um, 
we'll see if they are sort of mixed in with discussions the way the way Will suggested. In any event, we often find that uh, that sometimes these are underutilized during these office hours, uh, and uh, and that's a, I I think is a mistake. Um, okay, um, so use them. You can, you know, ask for new examples. You can, you know, show like, okay, here is how I'm solving this. Is this right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Now, technically, what do tests look like? Uh, you need a laptop or desktop, and you need some uh, way to scan your solutions into a PDF. If you type set, okay, then you just generate PDF and you upload that. Uh, that will not be the best way on for some material, because in some material, um, yo, well, if, it depends how fast you type set, okay? Uh, I will never ask you to draw anything, okay, where typesetting is uh, the hardest. Um, so it's just like whether you type fast, okay? Uh, if you don't, you can, and that's the, what majority of students do, just write on a piece of paper, on sheets of paper, your solutions. And then if you have a scanner, then put them on a scanner and the scanner is going to create, scan and create a PDF. If you have a cell phone, photograph and get yourself an app that can create a PDF, okay? And then, uh, you know, generate this PDF and, and upload it to the Gradescope site, okay? That's how it will work. If you have, um, uh, somebody says, can I uh, generate a PDF on the iPad? I believe probably you can, yes. Um, Anything that generates PDF, we don't monitor how you generate the PDF. We just need you to generate the PDF any way you, you want, okay? Any way you can. Uh, you are not going to be monitored during exams uh, with a webcam, okay? Uh, the, it will work like this. I will email the PDF with problems, um, and you will be solving them. And it's an honor code. You have to solve them on your own without communication with anyone. On the other hand, you can use your notes, you can use the, the textbook, so you can use lectures. Um, okay, uh, but you cannot use anything else and you cannot search the internet for you know solutions to similar problems. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we treat this very seriously. So, you know, because we want to create a level playing field where no one cheats, if we do see cheating, which, you know, who often cheats? Somebody who doesn't understand very well the stuff. Uh, they often make mistakes as in like they copy, but like without understanding, full understanding. And this is detected by us because we see that like, well, that doesn't quite make sense. Ah, it's copied from this web page here. Okay. Or it's actually very similar to something some other student wrote. Okay. Um, we probably don't detect every form of cheating, but we detect quite a few. And, you know, it's a small fraction of students who do this and uh, we prosecute them. Uh, I mean, we, you know, write them up to the um, Office of Academic uh, Integrity, which follows up and decides to either, um, so on our side, we just give you a zero from the test, okay, and because it's 20% of your grade, that's like passing versus failing, right, or getting a, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, then, uh, well, uh, so it's a shame. Uh, and uh, and uh, the Office of Academic Integrity does its thing. So it sometimes ends up with a warning uh, and sometimes with suspension and sometimes I guess kicking you out of the school, but like that basically it's a gradation. Like, so if you do it once, you get a warning. If you do it more than once, you get a suspension or something stronger. Uh, so don't do it. John Gauter, it's a pain for everyone. It's very fraud. 
I hate it. Everybody hates it. Uh, it's just, uh, ugh. Okay, so just don't do it. Don't go there. Um, you know, if you have some questions about it, let us let us know. Um, uh, but but and I mean it seriously. Like perhaps it's not obvious like what constitutes uh, a dishonest behavior and and what doesn't. Uh, uh, and and these questions are fair and by all means try to clear them out with us. Um, um, why would you cheat if it's open? No. So you mean like, well, because, you know, yes, you, it's open, but you don't know how to solve it, you know? Um, so I guess that's why some people try to cheat from, you know, because they still don't know how to solve it. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, homework, videos, uh, everything, you know, when we generate it, we will post it. Right, so we haven't generated any videos, so there's no videos. We did haven't generated any homework, there is no homework. But once it's uh, generated, it's posted on the website, and uh, I typically send the piazza uh, uh, post saying, "Hey, the homework one is on on the website. Uh, go do it." Okay. Uh... That's the class. Uh, I might have missed something. Um, I will scan the chat messages. Um, if you think that, uh, oh, time window for the exam. The exam is during the lectures. It's during the Thursday lecture time. Okay, that, that's very important. Uh, it's at 3.30 PM from 3.30 to five. I will have a special time at seven, but basically this will be restricted to students who join us from uh, time zones where 3.30 is not good. Okay, uh, last fall because of COVID, uh, more than 10%, we had like something close to 15% was um, joining from Japan, Korea, China, India, and Russia, uh, okay, there were some other cases, I think somewhere in the, in the Middle East, there was someone, uh, uh, okay, you get the, the point. Uh, there is also very few students who, you know, like have some other things, they really want to register to two classes uh, at the same time, uh, but it has to be by exception. You know, if you have really strong reasons why you cannot, you know, take it during the regular time, I will allow you to take this at 7 p.m., but I want to do, do it by exception only, okay? So I don't want mass migration uh, there. It hasn't happened in the previous quarter. Uh, people were, um, you know, good about this. Uh, so I expect, uh, how do you choose the final? Um, you sign up. You at 24 hours before the final, there's a site you can sign up. If you don't sign up, then you're not part of the final. If you sign up, then you are part of the final. Um, okay. And the exam is uh, the lecture time, so hour 20 minutes. Um, and it cuts to to lectures, so you know that's. Uh, they perhaps not so good, but perhaps in the past when I, uh, I would like release an occasional extra video with some stuff that, um, you know, I want to go over slowly, uh, that perhaps I went too fast over in a, in a, in a lecture. Um, so we make up for the fact that lecture time, you know, the four tests are during lecture times. Um, Okay, maybe these are the questions. Uh, if you have some uh, questions that uh, that you want to raise, then perhaps uh, speak up, and I will myself just go uh, to the the tests. Are oh, you think some date is off? Okay, um, yeah, uh, on the syllables that's possible that I, I put some date wrong. Um, 
I will fi put, put it on Piazza so I remember to fix it. Um, the reading isn't due on weekly basis, no, correct. Reading is not, I'm not going to monitor your reading. Um, can we type our answers into Word or Doc? Yes, any way you want to create a PDF. So one way is to write it in a Word and then convert to PDF. Um, any text editing thing that creates a PDF at the end is good. Um, oh, where is my accent? Thank you for asking. I'm Polish. Uh, hi, Christina. Uh, we can use Notability to write our test. I don't know what the Notability is. If it generates a PDF, yes. Uh, so what you will be uploading is a PDF. And I don't care how you generate it with one constraint. It has to be readable. Um, and yeah, OK. OK, so uh, please uh, read the stuff uh, that I wrote. In, in, you know, it's a little bit of a rot, perhaps, but re read it. Uh, it will have some um, answers, probably, to some of your questions. OK. Uh, OK, and maybe ATA will, will, will manage to answer <laughs> these questions. Uh, where, um, and somebody says, uh, if I haven't taken 6B, there will be a lot to catch up a little bit at the beginning. There is one place where we intersect with 6B. It's the logic. It's the first chapter. So indeed, that first part is, will be intense, more intensive for you. Uh, but the first test is in week four. So you do have some time to catch up. And homework one and homework two are graded for completeness. So try to do as much as you can, but like if you don't manage, um, we'll still give you, uh, you know, if you did basically, if you do like two thirds, we'll give you a uh, full point. Uh, does this class uh, intersect with 31? I do not know. I don't know what's, uh, what's in 31 exactly. Um, oh, uh, so yes, I do, I do think I know what this is. 31, I think, is uh, basically intro to programming. And, and there is one place where we do intersect, and it is um, recursive algorithms. So when we talk about recursion, we mostly focus on on um, other forms of recursion. Uh, but in the end, the most sort of immediately useful for a computer person is algorithms. So recursive algorithms. So if you know, you know, if you know how to write algorithms, you will have an edge in this uh, part. And if you're completely new to CS, computer science, you will have, uh, problem. I mean, you know, you will have to catch up. But it is something that I will not, you know, will not will include it, but it's not a great focus. Uh, second, we'll write algorithms in so-called pseudocode. So, you know, it's a very intuitive, we will not care about the exact notation, uh, it doesn't have to be look like C or any or uh, Java or any programming language. Really, it will just have to be, you know. Somehow we have to understand. You, it's clear what the algorithm does. Okay, that it has some variables that is instantiated, and it does the following with it. Okay, it multiplies it by some constant. Okay, and returns it. Uh, but of course, if you're new completely to algorithms. Well, you will have to learn it then. Um, but I don't think it's such a great intersection with you know, a significant intersection. And OK, ah, now I think I actually didn't say this. So homeworks one, one and two are graded for completeness. And uh, the, the, the basic issue with them is just I just want you to be easy with the grade scope interface so that there's no glitches during the test. However, there will be homeworks in the class. Now, the homeworks are a great way for you to exercise, do you understand the stuff or not? And 
you will have an option to submit your homework. If you submit, the grader will evaluate it and will give you feedback. This is especially important in some segments of the class, like for example, recursive proof, where you write something that looks like a proof to you. We release solutions and it's very different. And you don't know, so okay, so here is the proof that we wrote, but here is the proof you wrote and it's different. And like, is your proof still correct? Some of you will be able to say, oh, I see. Yes, it is. It's formally a little different, but it's really the same. Some of you will be able to see, okay, yes, I made a mistake here, but some of you will not be, okay? And it's completely understandable. That's why it's very good if you get personalized feedback. So a grader actually tells you, here is the problem. You made some assumption and it's a wrong assumption. You shouldn't make this assumption or you know, whatever the case is. So, but it will not come towards the grade. If you do horrible on the homework, it doesn't count. If you do great on the homework, it also doesn't count. The whole purpose of it is that you get personal feedback. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's the rule. That's the role of homework for you to exercise and to get personalized feedback if you want it. Yes, after week two, the Weekly homework is, is optional. It's for you to practice and to submit if you want feedback. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, I'm uh, basically, I'm kind of, uh, you know, because I noticed that a lot of, I used to have, homework that was obligatory. And I noticed that, you know, some students cooperate and then some students just copy uh, from one another. And then I have to give them the same credit as some other person who really tries to, to fight with it, right? And do it on their own. And then the person who copied gets a better score than the person who really tries to do it. And like, it's a huge class. So we, you know, if we really want to scrutinize how you did it, it takes a huge resource and it seems like it's not really that useful because a lot of people just did it like, uh, I don't really care. Um, so that's why I chose this format. Okay. I think it's, it's more productive, like it's a better use of everyone's time. Uh, now, I don't want to discourage you from doing homework. No, vice versa. It is a very important part. If you don't do it, you know, okay, the immediate consequence will be that you're probably not going to do well on the test. Okay. Um, so, um, so the class kind of, I think compared to some other faculty, you know, we are not going to monitor you very closely. Okay. Uh, we don't monitor like when you listen to lectures. We don't check that you participate in any discussion. We don't even check to give you points for, for homework. Okay. Uh, but don't be fooled by this that, oh, it's easy. I can cause it's actually many people find these topics hard. Uh, it's a little, it's actually kind of intense because it's these top these these sections are quite rich. They come fast, and you have to learn them and then move on to the next one. Um, you know, even people who with good math background, you know, they can be fooled like that. Oh, they understand all of this, and then when it comes to recursion, induction, and all the stuff, they like, oh, what's going on? Um, so, so keep yourself in shape and follow and do this stuff. And, you know, um, <laughs> um, yes, you will have discussion tomorrow. Um, I guess we'll prep first discussions at six or seven um, uh, because, you know, maybe for the next weeks, uh, we'll take a poll and we'll let people um, choose 
uh, better times. Um, yeah, okay, so, uh, okay, so I talked and talked and talked about all this logistics and, and kind of uh, didn't um, start um, anything, um, you know, from the, from the class, right? Uh, so let's try to uh, should I do the like little overview of the script map? Nah, no, I already talked about all these overviews. So let me just jump into 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 logic. Okay, so um, should I? One minute. Mm, you know, now I don't know. It's only fifteen more minutes. So uh, let's let's end here. Okay. Uh, I think the next class will be a little longer, if you can stand it, uh, because I I don't think it makes a super sense to just start with logic and try to do fifteen minutes of it. Um, so yeah. So I think I would just. Uh, and here, and we'll start um, going through the logic material on on Thursday, and we'll start going through the logic material on Wednesday, which is tomorrow during discussions, and and expect some opinion poll about discussion format uh, on on Piazza. And um, okay, so maybe I will stop recording right now, but I will keep on going. Uh, you know, I will keep the Zoom. So if you have more questions, then we can we can talk about them. Um, okay, so I'm stopping recording right now.